Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about drum breaks in Studio One, chopping them, um, editing the exact things. I mean, one of the staples of drum and bass is drum breaks, right? Um, before we get going, if you haven't checked out the first video, check it out for a quick overview of, you know, my thoughts um, on Studio One, its workflow, its capabilities, things like that, and what I think it has going for it for drum and bass in this episode we're going to get a bit more specific so without further ado it'll do drum breaks right here we have an amen just dropped in random sample pack um if you're curious the audio audio animals amen sample pack so our beloved amen break right sped up to 174 standard all right here we go so how could you, could we chop this break up? You could go by hand, switch your tool over to the cut tool. Shortcut is number three and you could cut like that. Uh, I don't like doing that, <laughs> to be honest. Sometimes I want to get in there and cut it, but you do have some other functionality. I'm going to hit Q and it's going to detect every transient. And what it automatically did is lock it to the timeline. Now, sometimes if we look at it, it can be a bit finicky as most dolls, but that just snapped it to a 16th grid. So this is time stretching it. It'll mark each transient and try its best to align that to the grid and then time stretch between basically these transient markers. When you go too far, you get a little red one. Now, see what I did with Q or the Q shortcut is basically go into, this is the right menu, the audio bin settings. In Logic, I believe it's called Flex Time and Ableton, you know, you have your markers. It works really well. I think for what it's worth, the um, most of like the time stretching algorithms are the same, but I think specifically to, stretching drum breaks, I don't really like time stretching them, at least not in this way. And you know, most people don't, but you can still take these, this detection, this transient detection. And over here in this action, you can either quantize or you can slice. So you can cut the slices, but usually if you want to do something like this, you want to hit analyze. Now see it's back to its natural timing but it has analyzed for the uh, transients and I can go detect as I can like take the big hits. So like your kicks, your snares, or I can zoom in and get the shuffles and things like that. You can also switch it to more sensitive mode, hit analyze and it'll cut even more down. But sometimes that can pick up like art artifacts and things that cause tiny little transients. So in this case, we might use standard hit analyze. That's the kick hi hat snare, hi-hat, shuffle the drum break, right? And then make sure over here in action, you have slice. Got it? And now you can quantize it 100% to the grid or however much you like. You can add fades. Um, I'm not going to add any fades just for this or just to, you know, demonstrate functionality. Let's add some fades and that'll fade it. I think the end, let me, I, so we're going to slice it to these transients and then it's going to quantize once it's sliced to the grid. So we hit apply. Boom. All right. So it didn't add any fades to the beginning, but it added some fades to the end. So now that drum break is sliced. And quantized. Now it's a bit, you know, choppy sounding as in the sound doesn't continue. And you can do some audio editing from there, but it's all chopped up to each individual hit. Now, where could we go from here? Well, you can, again, by hand, move things around, or you can highlight everything. And I just click, select, drag, all one motion. Right, click it, and then go to audio, and then you can select, send to new sample one. And it'll send all these slices into sample one. So now that it's in sample one, you see each little chops in there, and you can, Yeah. Now this is where one little quirk comes in 
and that I know has been asked for in Studio One. So if uh, the folks at Personas are watching, we really love if when we slice things up, it immediately adds a MIDI, a MIDI um, part there. So we can go in, so it's Im immediately just like stepped. So once you, once it's sliced, it's just like, you know, you're, that's already there. Cause right now you have to do it by hand, unless you use a rex file. So for the next thing, say you have a rex file, which is usually already sliced. You can drag that over if you want. So let's say I drag this rex file over to a new track and it's all there, right? But as the rex files are, they are just uh, pre-sliced basically in a folder. And I can unpack that folder and have all the slices there as well. And I can do that if you have a rex file or I can right click the rex file and then hit send to new sample one. Now, not only are all of the slices chopped and I can, you know, do what I want within there, it's in the piano roll as well. So if you look at the piano roll, it's all there. And I can go in and move things around, you know, chop a drum break. And that is basically how you're gonna chop breaks in Studio One. Again, you can do it by hand. You can have it detect transients and you can move things on the grid. And you can highlight all the slices you made, click send to a new sample one. It makes it a sample one instrument, but for now you're gonna to have to go in and draw your own MIDI. Or if you have Rex files, which a lot of drum breaks are already Rex files, you can just right click that Rex file. We'll pick another one. Again, in Amen, send to sample one. Boom, there it is. All chopped up, all in the piano roll to effect as you please. Jungle, that's it. So what about saving breaks? Now you can always bounce the audio, but then you have a printed break. And while you lose a bit of flexibility, like keeping your slices and things like that, if you don't bounce it, you can save it as Personas' proprietary format, which is a music loop, which if you bring over here, if you look, I'm dragging, again, drag and drop functionality. I take this MIDI region, I drag it over to the browser, and it gives you the option for music loop or MIDI file. So you can save it as just that MIDI file or you can save it as a music loop. And what music loop does is save the instrument entirely. So if I come over here, I can even unpack the music loop so you can see what is about what it's there. So it has like a part file, which is just an audio representation of what it is. It has the MIDI and the instrument, which is sample one. Now, if I select this music loop, right? And then I move it back into the project, it adds the entire instrument sliced, ready to go. Nice. That's that's chopping drum breaks in Studio One and chopping basically anything. I mean, you can load like a melodic sample, chop it up the same way, play it on the keyboard, just like that. Again, some quirks, like if you slice something within Sample One XT or you drag some samples in there and make slices, it won't automatically put like a MIDI um, readout right here. It won't put the notes there automatically. That's a little quirk, which I hope will be fixed in the future. Not necessarily fixed, but added because it, again, adds the usability. That's a quirk. I mean, in Ableton, FL Studio, that's kind of it also. For, you know, it's useful, right? So I hope that gets added. But as drum breaks, chopping them up in Studio One, hope it was useful. Let me know how you get on with it. See you in the next one.